All right, welcome back. So far, when making changes to our config and server files, we've been restarting the server manually. Let's get it restarting automatically with Nodemon. So first things first, let's install Nodemon so we can play around with it. We're gonna install Nodemon globally. So let's use the G flag. All right, cool. Now in our package JSON, under dev, let's change node to Nodemon. Nodemon watches certain directories and will restart node every time these directories change. We're going to want to add some watch directories. You do that with a watch flag. We're going to want to watch config and we're going to want to watch source server. Finally, we're going to state what we want to reload at the end. In this case, it's main.js. So let's give that a shot. npm run dev. You can see the output is slightly different. Nodemon is watching these folders, and it's starting this command. Pretty simple. So what happens when we change our webpack config? Recompiles. All right. So now we can just make changes to our server files and our config, and Nodemon will handle the rest. In the last episode, we had a problem editing our index.html. We could change the text in the index.html, and it would recompile, but it wouldn't update the text in the browser. What we want is for the browser to reload automatically every time we change our index.html. So to do that, we're going to need to install a plugin and replace some of our loaders. So in our terminal, let's exit out, and let's, and let's npm install HTML Webpack plugin. Now inside our webpack dev, let's add that to the top. We'll say const HTML webpack plugin. Now down here in the HTML loader, the HTML webpack plugin basically does the job of the HTML loader. We're going to remove the file and extract loaders so that we don't have a duplicate but we're going to leave the HTML loader, and I'll talk about why in a second. So now let's add it to the plugins. We're going to say new HTML webpack plugin, and that's a function. We're going to give it an object of options. Right now, let's just give it one option, template. And we're going to point to our HTML. So because index.html is in source, we'll do dot source index.html. Let's put a comma on the end of this one. So now that we've changed that, let's look at our index.html for a second. The HTML Webpack plugin is going to automatically inject these script tags, so we don't need this hard-coded anymore. We can remove it. And inside the plugin options, if we set it inject false, it would not add that script tag, but the default is inject true. The last thing we need to look at is in our client main.js. Right here in the Webpack hot middleware line, we need to add Reload true. Now, I wish this was an option inside the webpack config, but it's not. You need to add it right here in this require. And this is the final piece of the puzzle for reloading HTML. So let's give it a shot. npm run dev. All right, looks good. So let's see, is our JavaScript reloading? Save. Looks like it is. Is our HTML reloading? So you see it reloads from the browser. Now what if we took reload true off? You can see that we save it, nothing happens. What about our good old fashioned CSS? Yeah, that seems to work. So the reason we keep the HTML loader in here is because we're including it inside of our main.js on the client side. If we took this out, we wouldn't need the loader anymore. We could remove the loader completely from here. But because it's in here, if we remove that loader, it's going to cause an error. But as an added bonus, having that loader and having it required in the main.js gives us hot reloading for index.html. You can do the same thing for index.ejs, and we'll talk about that in future episodes. 
All right, so this is looking pretty good. Let's put the reload true back on there. So now we're where we were using the dev server from the command line. We've got assets that we can manipulate via hot module reloading, an HTML file that updates as we change it. We can even update the Webpack config, and Nodemon will reload everything. So we're back to reactive programming, with a better stack for the future of our app. In the next episode, we're going to take a better way to debug both client and server code with the Chrome DevTools. See you there.